Hello, hello, I'm already slurring like Caroline Brooks. Welcome to Watch What Crap Ends, <laughs> podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker, and joining me today is Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie, how are you? Hello, Ben. <laughs> Welcome to your recap of the penultimate episode of season two of Real Housewives of Dubai. Can you believe it? We're Possibly forever. Possibly forever? Really? Is there talk that it's not coming back? Well, I mean, it. I think five people are watching it, so I'm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what ratings are required these days. But girl, I, th- I feel like we're the only people. And you know what? I've kind of realized what's missing from this show. And we love this show, by the way. So this is not even to start negging on this show right at the start because I love this show. I think the season's fantastic. But I think what's really missing from this, it's a ghost town. This show. You know, it I'm looks s- like people are making yes. up a play, and I, I didn't really. Re- it never hit me until, until I, I read a comment restaurant. on Reddit where they said, "There's no one in any of the scenes," <laughs> and it's true. It's this big cavernous town with all of this like marble and gold everywhere, but nobody. You don't see any human beings. It does look like an off Broadway play about Real Housewives, where the only cast members are the six people in it. You know, I, it's so funny that you mentioned that because in this episode, they go to a restaurant at the end of the episode. And I noticed that this restaurant at this big resort, this big fancy resort in this restaurant that looks very nice is empty. And I was looking in the background. I was like, there's one person, there's two people. I was like, where is everyone? This is not like they were shooting the scene at 3 p.m. like they will often do on other shows. But this was like nighttime and it does feel empty. And I was just reflecting on that. It's kind of like um, during pandemic lockdown when they were shooting seasons, there was a weird vibe on a lot of those Housewives seasons then because they were in very empty spaces. And it does sort of feel, it does feel empty. I felt this way about the first season too. It's like, you don't have that pulsing energy of being out in public because so much of these shows is, I can't believe these people are acting this way in public, you know? It's a big cavernous, empty space, this show. It's like people trying to have an intimate scene in a food court at all times, you know, just big, <laughs> yes. marble, empty. Uh, it's basically a representation of Sarah's personality. It's just big, ornate, <laughs> expensive, and ultimately empty. And I think that that's kind of a problem. And, you know, one of these, the whole point of Housewives is that the city is another character, right? I mean, Every place has their flavor because the city really is kind of another character in the show. So when your city is just empty and void of any personality, it kind of makes it hard. Now, that said, I think they've had a really good season and I hope they get another chance. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, 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 I say it like every episode, I did not like the first season and I've been won over by season two. I think it's really good, really entertaining, really hilarious. I was cackling this entire episode. So I, I do hope people take some time to watch it but last week they got 2.238 million people i mean that's <laughs> that's summer's I don't hard think they're gonna be able to be brought back summer's hard I mean, people are traveling like watch what crappens number you know <laughs> or watch what happens watch what happens the late night show <laughs> number which is obviously a lot lower i mean i feel like crazy I've, times everyone i've talked to who watches Bravo, they all seem to be watching it and they all seem to be saying things like, yeah, this season's really good. It's like really funny. Everyone online is saying like, Dubai is quietly having a great season. Like there's definitely chatter about it. Um, but I don't, it's, yeah, it's, the but alas. it's hard. It's hard. It's hard for a new, a newer franchise that if it stumbles out the gate the first season, it's hard to get back those viewers because people have a lot of things that they can watch at any given time. They could be watching Baby Reindeer or chimp crazy or chimp oh God, there's so many shows we don't even know about i mean when we went searching for shows to recap now that Bar- bravo's in this lull we were like what the hell are these shows i mean there's so many and we're recapping stuff that we never thought we'd recap chimp crazy that's a thing chimps. um we're talking about chimps the mormon lives of mormon wives secret lives of mormon wives that's coming up i mean someone was like crazy you, shit out there yeah someone was like you got to watch like gypsy sisters on tlc or something like there's just like a whole there's like a there's a i didn't even know you were still allowed to call people i know and I they have a whole show they have like multiple seasons of that so i don't know there's a lot of weird Who stuff knows? out there uh but um all right well let's get on with this one shall we this one is season two episode 11 and it's called serving the tree Ooh. serving the tree i don't know if i even understand that as an as a serving the tree is that like tree pose maybe girl you're serving tree <laughs> 
Um, uh, bling, 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 bling. That's called uh, being a waitress at Rails. Now, can I have you? Uh, yeah, can I have the lasagna? But, like, uh, could you put comment in it? And, like, uh, I don't know. By the, uh, <laughs> by the way, one of the great. Uh, uh, bling, 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 can you imagine waiting on Teresa just like, what's that? What's that? <laughs> can I have that? What's that? What's that? Huh? What's that? Can I have that? Like, cause like Melissa won't get that. That's like stupid. Um, one of the great joys of season two of Dubai has been obviously the addition of Talene, but I find that I randomly spend all week going, Hey, Raf, Raf, what are you doing? Raf, Raf, Raf. did you see that cloud? Raf, check out that cloud. Raf, Raf. I like doing the general talking like Talene in any situation yes. where everything is the most dramatic thing that's ever happened. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Roth, you will not believe the list lot. of ingredients on these brownies. Yeah. Should we just pour them all into the bowl, Roth? And they're so gross, this couple. I mean, as we've gotten, as they've. As we've gotten more used to him, I think a lot of it was that social media video of her uh, last week of the, they wouldn't let Roth in to the restaurant because he was talking on his phone. Do not go there. And that hostess, Marissa, like going off on the hostess. <laughs> Do not like, go to the Hillstone of Kirby. <laughs> they wouldn't let Roth in. He had a very important Roth phone call. Yeah, gross people. Um, and of course, Roth is that type walking in a restaurant, talking full voice on his phone with his doll hair. So they're gross. But you know what? It really works for this. It Love really, them. really does work for this <laughs> show. I do Listen, too. They're gross. They're terrible people. They're just right up my alley. I'm like, <laughs> my favorite. I love, I love Talene and Roth. Yeah. So we open the episode with Lisa in a ball gown at home. <laughs> As you know, I don't even know if that's true, but I just imagine Lisa's always dressed to the nines, even when she's making pancakes for the kids. But Lisa is at home and she's doing the typical, like, I'm inviting everyone to my event thing, but she's leaving a voice message for everybody, which have you not learned your lesson, girl? <laughs> yeah, girl, no more voice notes. So she's like, hey, everyone, like, come to the, come to like the the spa. I'm going to, she's going to show off Mina Rowe's new skincare line. And uh, yeah, she's leaving a voice voice note for everyone, and uh, then a sexy pic of Caroline and Sergio sort of pop up on her phone, I guess, from the group chat. And her kids are like, can, and she's like, "Oh my god!" And her kids are like, "Can we see it?" She's like, "Definitely not." No, oh, you can't even come in the room. I don't need you to see this. You hurt my children. That'll be her next thing. Like, yes. oh, I can't believe you've done this to my children. Uh, can I just say? I'm going to need some better housewives businesses. We don't need any more of your imported China, you know, imported like factory face creams with your your branding on them. We need new shit, people. OK, I don't want your your fucking Timu creams the same in a row. Come up with something better. So lifeless, you know, you know and I think Lisa's having that problem on this show. She's so fucking beautiful, but she's so depressed and lifeless. <laughs> so, even her voicemail. She's like, girls, I would like to invite you because I have moisturizer. And I'm like, I'm exhausted. Like you're literally you're you're opposite influencing me. I don't want even want to use moisturizer anymore i'm just gonna start going dry after this episode you know i feel like we gave barbara friend of on real Housewives of new york so much shit for so many different reasons but we really should have recognized that she was trying to innovate the real housewives um side hustle uh space a little bit by uh jazzling yeah no no not no not the jazzling that's you're thinking of carol not carol you're thinking of you know what's her face I'm talking about Barbara. Oh, no one knows her she name. had a toolkit. <laughs> Remember Barbara? Oh, Barbara, the construction lady. Yeah. It's <laughs> like toolkits for women. <laughs> you know? Yeah. How I would yearn, how I yearn to have that, those days back of seeing a toolkit instead of more skin cream and yeah. like wine and uh, whatever else. The bejazzle. Yeah, remember Barbara, like the construction where she's like, I'm Barbara. I construct things, not bisexual. And Ramona's like, gross. Gross. Well, no, Cindy gross Barshop does the jazzling, okay? Yeah, Cindy Barshop. Oh. I mean, although <laughs> yeah, never uh, she had construction and then she ran for mayor, she remember? She did run for mayor. Yeah. Yeah. And I ran a marathon. <laughs> I ran for marathon. <laughs> Carol Redswell. 
That's her. Okay, so um, she leaves the most boring voice message ever for the most boring business idea ever for the ladies. And then um, we go over to Stanbury's house, and Sergio's like, honey, 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 honey. <laughs> what, Sergio? <laughs> Hi. Hi, honey. Honey, honey. There's a lady who sort of looks like you in the in the in the in the in the living room, but she doesn't want to do tiki tiki. That's my mother, Sergio. Lay off her. <laughs> uh, so her mother is there. Her mother looks terrified every time she's there. Ugh. Like, who put me here? <laughs> she looks like she just woke up. They took a bag off of her head, and she's like, "Oh God, I'm at Caroline's home." <laughs> this why? Oh, so this is this must be what boarding school would have been like. Being sent off to the lap of luxury where no one appreciates you, apparently. So she looks like Blythe Danner when Blythe Danner first had to smell Gwyneth's vagina candle. Yes, like she does have. She's like this is what I made. Danner. She does. She looks like her, and she just has that disappointment of like, I'm a serious actor, and I've raised a woman who makes vagina candles for billions of dollars now. What a great one for me. (laughs) What I'm sorry, I'm like caffeinated. I keep talking right over you. What well, I never, I never stop talking. Though I make a pause, like it's your turn to start start talking, and then you try, and then I just keep no, no. It's I'm really I'm just what I'm doing. I, I'm not doing I'm it all doing it right now as we speak. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't control myself today. But we've also literally been talking for two hours before we even pressed record because we can't shut up. We're also we're like, you know what we should do today? We should immediately start working, girl. What do you think about ovens? We're also giddy because it feels like it's our Friday, but we really still have to. We still have like so much more work to do this week. But in my mind, I'm like, it's Friday, it's Wednesday, guys. So, um, uh, no, one of my favorite tropes are old British people who are sort of part of the aristocracy who get tricked into coming onto Bravo. Like that is that's a joy, and that's what's happened with Caroline's parents who are like, oh, okay, well, we'll be here on your television program. It's a little bit. It's a little bit of the lower classes, but, you know, we are people of the people, and that's what we can do. We have to represent the queen, or the king, I should say. God rest the queen's soul. And we shall do it here for American audiences. <laughs> so Stamber is like, oh, mom, it's chaos here. We've got constant people. Like, you know, upstairs, I've got closet people in, the carpet people in. I, I don't know what to do with that. Someone at the end of my bed in the morning, you know, uh, uh, do you like the house, by the way? And she's like, I think you've done a fantastic fantastic job it's large looks like there are doors that open yes they do open i'm free to use them whenever mm. i'd like well that would be lovely it would be lovely if i could get out of these chains on my ankle and walk towards the door please let me go please let me you know it's it's absolutely beautiful household i mean I th- you know some in England would probably call it gaudy, but I think that's what you were going for, was were you not? I think it's, I love how you said, I'm going to take all the traditional views of what is a beautiful and refined home and turned it on its head and said, no, this is the new look. Tacky furniture, oversized chairs, disgusting things, a butler who's also your husband. Uh, sorry, tiki tiki? Yes. Wonderful, Caroline. Revolutionary. <laughs> I'm so excited. My parents are finally seeing the house. They've seen all the pictures when we were building it, but they haven't been in yet. So they're so excited. Just look at my mother. And just cuts to her mom like, God, I hate this. (laughs) God. (laughs) Listen, I don't regret sending her to nannies. I do regret sending her to terribly tasteless nannies. (laughs) You know, Caroline really needs to, to calm down about all her, like, brown uniform nanny trauma because like she just has to wait about 10 years and she gets to like get her revenge it's like mother i'm sending you to old people boarding school good luck you'll spend the rest of your life there Uh, it's called being drugged out in the chair in the corner (laughs) have fun (laughs) caroline so by the way her dad her dad is in this giant chair this like giant striped chair her dad seems like he has no idea what to do with it he's like this chair is a little bit too big it's not very refined i would say but i'll i'll try to sit and be comfortable in it well is this what you call a cushion disgusting (laughs) absolutely disgusting you must get soft sitting on something soft you know you need something hard now caroline don't really approve of the home but it is a home and you've got a roof over your head have we paid for it? Probably. But you've also found a very strong gay to pay the other half. And we really appreciate that. So in order to celebrate, 
we'd like to introduce you to Phil. Phil, come in and get Caroline. Wait, you can't take me away. You're going to boarding school. <laughs> Goodbye. But <laughs> this I'm... This is my home! <laughs> but I'm between the age range of 46 and 50. And, um... <laughs> much like I am. Sorry, that's Chanel. That's Chanel, but let's be honest. So Sergio's like, well, the uh, bar mitzvah was amazing, eh? And um, Stanbury's dad, Anthony, is like, absolutely beautiful. I thought those two young lads looked like they were having time in their lives. Now, who were they again? Your grandchildren? Oh, yes. I think that's the first time I met oh, them. I have one question. Well, what are they doing near you? They're my children, father. Exactly. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> There's no school to send them to. You know, traditionally, when you turn 13 in the Jewish religion, that's when you become a man. And uh, they have to bring in a new class of nannies to whisk you away to boarding school. <laughs> I don't understand why you would spend time with people who are going through puberty. Uh, don't they have questions about <laughs> how children are born, why the hair is growing in funny places? Do you actually answer those? The best part about a horror is that no one can actually really see when your child gets whisked away to a school in a far-off land. The circle disappears and they're look gone. I would love to have been there for your bat mitzvah. But we didn't really believe in teaching you the Torah, darling. We just believed in teaching you the ta-ta. Ta-ta. Wait a minute. <laughs> Let go of me. You're going now. You're going to boarding school. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> but I'm a... But when I turned into... But bat mitzvah means I'm a woman. I don't have to abide by your rules. That's very lovely, dear. You're off to boarding school. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you can be a woman in a far-off place. So, she was like, well, that bar, that bar mitzvah was amazing. They were so happy. And the mom's like, oh, I think we shed a tear, didn't we, darling? Did we? Did we shed a tear? Well, I don't know, darling. I mean, I did look over at you, and there was one solid tear streaming down your face. But it's always there. Yes, that's been happening for quite some years now. I think it's dry eye, is it? Dry eye. That's doing it right now. Are you sad now? I am, but not crying sad. Mostly just <laughs> look around and... Look and see what all your hard-earned money has bought you. Not much, darling. We've raised a child who's built a disco ball for herself to live in. <laughs> Caroline, that bar mitzvah was absolutely beautiful, and your father and I cried almost as much as when we sent you off to boarding school. Well, I don't remember you crying at all. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so Sergio's like, she's like, Sergio goes, well, I wanted to cry, to be honest. And Samberry goes, again? Sergio <laughs> cries whenever the toast is ready. <laughs> and Stanbury is like, oh, well, let me tell you, they just built a synagogue in Abu Dhabi. And there's a church that's just been built with the bells ringing next door. I mean, it is just wild. All of these relig religions living in harmony. Well, the religions, the unwanted religions, all being forced into one tiny little neighborhood that can be sucked into the sand at any given moment. But really, it's, it's neither here nor there. It just depends on how you look. Potato, potato, half full, half empty. You know what I mean. Uh, so then, um, Stanbury... I like the idea of them being like, okay, you can have a synagogue here now. Put it right next to the church. Put bars around it. <laughs> They're like, wow, we love this town. I was like, you, they're putting you all in the same neighborhood for a reason. So Stamper is like, so what's the bit where they put them in the chair? I mean, he, I mean, he got catapulted and fell out of it. I guess, I guess her son fell off of the chair during the horror, and <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it was Sergio. <laughs> baby, baby, I fell off the chair. I fell off the chair, baby. Baby, put me back on the chair. No, Sergio, if you fall off the chair, you don't get back on. You just crawl off into the. Into the, desert. the image of them lifting that chair like they do at every bar mitzvah and then them doing it too hard so the kid catapults off of it is fucking hilarious. I had to pause that and laugh <laughs> that because that, that shit was funny. <laughs> so that, was and then the mom's like, is that part of the ceremony? <laughs> My child falling? No, mother, it's not part of the ceremony. Actually, well, we, we thought you'd finally gotten some sense and tried to send him off. You know? <laughs> Put him on the chair, make him think it's a party, make it too hard. Before you know it, he's gone. Different city. Next thing you know, he lands in Andover and never have to see him again. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. So Stanbury's like, so my father's Jewish, my grandparents are Jewish, my mother is not. 
uh, which is amazing because she married a Jewish man and now at the ripe old age of 70-something, she's only finding out about the chair part of the bar mitzvah. Anyway, so I have always been brought up in a very multicultural way and my name before the war was Steinberg, not Stanberry. By the way, me, I was blown away. I was like, are you kidding me? Caroline Stanberry, who always seemed to me the waspiest wasp of all Bravo, it turns out she's a member of the tribe. I couldn't believe it. You could have knocked me over with a feather, much like her child on that chair. You didn't know? I, if I had known, I'd forgotten. Oh my God. Was that a part yeah. of Ladies of London that she was Jewish or half Jewish? I think so. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know what? When it came up, I was like, oh, yeah. But I didn't say that. Like, I wasn't shocked. I don't know. Maybe I, I just accepted it like I did know it before, but maybe I didn't. I don't know. <laughs> so um, there's a loud clang, and Stanbury's like, everything okay? God, what's going on up there? Are they trying to get in through the windows? They'll never stop trying, Caroline. That's what they're paid to do. <laughs> Mother, tell them to stop. I'm not going back to boarding school. We'll see about that, darling. You know, I'm sorry. They're putting in the glass. I get so stressed. There's so many people here. Sergio, leave the house. Ah, much better. <laughs> Sergio, they're moving the heavy marble up there, and if they, I don't want them to drop it onto the floor and chip it again. Lie down, so if they drop it, it'll fall on you. Go on. Hey, uh, hey, Anthony, I want to show you the barbecue. Uh, you want to come with me? Yes, Sergio, show them the barbecue, and be sure to put your head into it. Thank you. We are men. You want to go be men together? Come on, honey. <laughs> come on. Come on, father, honey. Well, yes. So, mother, hmm... So nice to have you here. We have such a warm relationship. It's just been really hard building a house. You saw it. This was a piece of dirt land last year, and now it's Sergio. And the house, too. It's brand new. Well, it's lovely, darling. In a few years, I'll just be back to a piece of dirt. I can't say that sounds half bad right now. Will you build a house on me, too? <laughs> and then Elizabeth looks at the dog, dog and goes, You're not going to bite me today, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Mother. We sent him off to boarding school and he came back traumatized also. <laughs> so this is so funny to me because this whole scene is like, is all right, Mother, well, listen, they've said that I'm not showing enough of myself on The Real Housewives, so I need you to come over where we're going to talk about our feelings. I'm sorry. Our feelings, you know. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you know, things going through our minds. I just, I don't <laughs> Her mother... Sadness, <laughs> happiness, anything. Mm. Mm, afraid not. Her mother is the definition of stiff upper lip British society, right? So Stanbury is like, Mother, do you see a change in me here? And she goes, Elizabeth says this, such coded, such coded language. Because, yes, I think you're much more relaxed here. Definitely. <laughs> you're less of a bitch. It's like, what What the hell? You dress more like a so slut. You... I'll say it right then and there. You shan't be invited to any function at Birmingham Palace. Oh, well, not Birmingham Palace. Buckingham Palace. Birmingham Neither Palace. Buckingham nor Birmingham Palace. Neither city wants you in their palaces anymore. I love Caroline. Mother, do you see a change in me? You've had five faces since I've last seen you. <laughs> of course I see a change in you. You're literally a different head. All right. Well, you're not afraid to act like so, a on television. So, yes, you do seem much more relaxed. Uh, someone like me, unfortunately, is concerned about my public image. So, I guess I'm. I guess that makes me uptight. An uptight monster who sends her daughters off to boarding school where they can meet future leaders of the world and come home and then blame their mothers for it. Darling, you look so relaxed. Thank you, mother. That wasn't a compliment. <laughs> you look so comfortable. Mm. So she's like, "Well, mother, I've learned from hypnotherapy." That I'm not soft. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you learned from hypnotherapy, did you? Is that hypnotherapy Bravo television? Yeah, no kidding. Have you seen yourself on television? <laughs> uh, and Elizabeth goes, did you? <laughs> yes. So the hypnotherapist, she's taking me back to boarding school. And Elizabeth goes, oh, yes. Well, hmm. Yes. I That's the best idea I've ever heard of, actually. Oh, I can't wait to relitigate this argument for the 45th time with new evidence entered in from a hypnotherapist in Dubai. <laughs> Sounds so reasonable, hypnotherapist. Why is it that you constantly try to hurt me? Have you done one thing since I've been here that isn't trying to hurt me? You've got a tiny dog on furniture. You're dating a child. 
You've moved into a marble shithole that looks like a disco ball. <laughs> and now you're going to a hypnotherapist. Are you kidding? I mean, therapy is bad enough without adding hypno to it. <laughs> Why don't you just grab a knife and stab me with it? Grab a knife made out of tiny dog fangs and just stab me in the gut with it 30,000 times. That's her inner voice. Her, out, her outer voice just goes, mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely. My, that's lovely to hear. What have you learned? Well, you know, you know, boarding school, it's a very unnatural place, says Caroline Stanberry in a giant um, empty box <laughs> that's surrounded by green in grass desert. in the middle of the desert. So <laughs> with the backdrop of a tree that she had to have crane lifted over her home as she pulls out a different country as she as she drives down her street on a palm frond in the middle of the Persian Gulf. <laughs> That's a very unnatural place. With a uh, face remolded out of old Howard the Duck parts. <laughs> like, who are we kidding here? So uh, Elizabeth goes, absolutely. Listen, everyone went to boarding school. That was absolutely normal, Caroline. She goes, well, at the time, yes. I mean, it's a very English thing, mother, but it's just so outdated now. <laughs> yes, Elizabeth, Elizabeth goes, yes, I think it is very outdated. You know, people, people don't want to, I don't know, get good educations and learn independence and meet powerful people who they could become future husbands and wives with. It's a very outdated thing to actually think about your future. I, I get it. But, you know, it also does teach you to be independent and it teaches you discipline and it teaches you about relationships and it teaches you the value of how nice it is that your parents can have some silence in their home for once. Things like that. Very outdated. This Listen, of course, it's more modern now, darling, but back then we didn't have iPads. We actually had to come up with creative ways to ignore our children. <laughs> you know, someday when, you're, when your children get a little bit older, you'll realize just throwing money at the situation is just a great way to live life. Send them off somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> So Stanbury's like, um, you know, if I'm ever going to have a relationship and move forward, I may as well let them live in the joyous little bubble that they did the perfect thing for all their children. And I hope my children one day do the same for me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so she tells her mom, well, you're actually softer too now, mom. Like, you're you're way softer than we you were when we were growing up. She goes, how would you know? You never saw me when you were growing up. <laughs> well, still, though, I mean, you seem nicer. You've smiled at me. I've not smiled at you, Caroline. <laughs> Look, what are you doing right now? Am I smiling right now? No, you're not, actually. That one tear is still coming down your eye. <laughs> I think I'm sobbing. Am I? Get your father. You know, mother... Here's the problem with boarding school. I think you don't learn about relationships. I think it stunts your relationships. I think it disconnects you. Like, I'm not very good at sharing my problems. And Elizabeth goes, well, that's good. You shouldn't share your problems. <laughs> and Caroline's looking at her like, what? And she goes, well, not big time anyway. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, if you have a problem with, let's say, how your mother sent you to boarding school, you probably shouldn't share that. Just keep it inside and smile. Yeah. She's like, but it makes it hard, mum, to be married and to have kids because I'm such an insular person, you know? And she's like, mm, that's a good, exactly. That's a good thing. <laughs> she's like, you know, I've I mean, done my job. Listen, we. I mean, I'm sure it doesn't shock you. I'm kind of team Elizabeth here. I mean, I think that there's like a middle ground, right, between what Caroline wanted growing up and then what she got. Because honestly, I don't need everybody's feelings and thoughts barfed all over me all day every day either you know right. so i think some of us could use a little more elizabeth in us but you know she does go a little far with it yeah. it's like mom i can't open up to anyone she's like congratulations thank god it's like the, <laughs> finally a compliment on my parenting <laughs> well i mean what would you want to open up about i don't know issues with sergio exactly no one needs to hear that <laughs> no one wants to hear that you're welcome it's basically a confession I mean, look, I think that sending boarding, like kids out to boarding school at like seven or eight, which it sounds like that's when she went off. That is pretty rough. But I don't know. I think that Caroline going on and on about her boarding school trauma for the past 10 years, because this is this was her storyline in season three of Ladies of London. Like it's getting old because I understand you felt like you were, you know, sent off, didn't get to be with your parents, yada, yada, yada. That's all legit. But I, I don't know. When we're sharing airtime with other people on this very network who actually went through the foster system, 
I don't know. It just doesn't feel. It's like, oh, look at this. You don't understand how traumatizing it was for me to go to boarding school and have myself set up for the rest of my life. Well, Caroline's also one of those people that only does this stuff because she literally has to for the show. They're like, Caroline, you have to have some kind of feelings. No. Well, Caroline, I mean, something must have happened bad when you were growing up. I mean, no. Well, <laughs> what was your relationship with like with your parents? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I was at boarding school. All right, we're going to go with boarding school. All right, talk about boarding school. Because she doesn't seem that traumatized by boarding school. She never has. She's just always like, it's just so hard not growing up with your parents. You know, going to boarding school and are we done with this yet? Can I, can I go to lunch? Be done with this. I mean, like every trauma she brings up isn't really that traumatic. I think she's just one of those people who just kind of goes through life and she's fine. Yeah. And then people are like, but you have to feel something. And she's like, I don't. But aren't you worried? I mean, your husband's so young. Exactly. That's why I have him. <laughs> right. But like, what if he wants a kid? He can't have one. Well, how do you think that affects him? I don't care. <laughs> well, don't you think you should act like you care? Fine, let's do another scene about that. Do you really need a child? Let's think about it. I mean, she's been doing that for three years. Like, yeah, I mean, and the irony is that here she is. She doesn't want to have a, a child. She doesn't want to have to deal with a little kid again. You know, like her kids are growing up. Like one, one daughter's going to college, the other two are like about to are they're going to be teenagers soon she doesn't want to have to go back to a toddler phase i'm like caroline don't you realize the answer is in front of you have the baby send it send it to boarding school <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's called have someone else to raise it <laughs> it's called the circle of life get with it your mother gave you the tools to deal with this situation <laughs> Don't you understand, though, I can't even get a package from the front door because when I see someone in a brown uniform, I just have to curl up into the fetal position. I've been traumatized by nannies oh, and yeah. boarding school. Yeah, I just think Caroline is one of those people that's like, I'm rich, I'm fabulous, and I'm fine. Yeah. And so they're like, you can't be fine. So she's like, all right, fine. I'll just come up with things. Just roll the tape. But I think ultimately Caroline's fine and people just don't know how to deal with somebody like that. They, yes. You need to have some kind of trauma or some kind of drama or some kind of insecurity. <laughs> and she just doesn't. So I feel like everybody is like, she must be a sociopath. If we're going to keep her on the air, we need something more. Yeah. I think that's a, actually a really good theory. So basically, um, yeah, Stanbury does not want to. She's like still concerned about, does she have a baby? Does she not have a baby? And Elizabeth is like, well, I think that's what you've got to do. You've got to think about it and talk about it. And by talk about it, I mean, don't talk to anyone about it because it's a problem. <laughs> I think you need to ask yourself, how do I feel about this? And then tell nobody. Ever. <laughs> Keep it on the inside and just smile. So Stanbury is like, well, you know, Sergio wants more babies and we've got an embryo. But I do understand that, you know, he feels like he's the only boy in the family. You know, <laughs> don't you have a gardener? Mother? Well, seriously, just get a gardener and say, oh, Edward, you've always been like family to us. I should do it. Give him an extra <laughs> hundred at Christmas. Darling, have you not been participating in the family charity? Adopt an orphan? You just have to do that and you'll be fine. <laughs> um, she's like, well, you know, Sergio really wants someone to carry on his name. Oh, I'm sorry. Are there no more Corallos in the world? <laughs> we run out of those. So now uh, a song takes us to the next scene. And the song is like, I like to swipe because I can afford it. If you're blowing up my line, then it better be important. I'm a boss. Yeah, I'm in charge. Some good old Trixie music. I, I like that Trixie's modernized. She's like, all right, we've got to modernize. We can't just say boss bitch over and over again. All right, we're going to bring technology into it. I swat. I swat. I swat my fucking phone, bitch. I'm a boss. All right, print. Print. <laughs> it's swat. good. Speaks to modern, modern technology. No more dial phones swiping. Swiping on an iPhone. So now... Uh, yes, I'm dancing with my arms. Give me shit. I'll cause you harm. I'm a bitch. A boss bitch. <laughs> Why are you dancing with your arms, Trixie? It's TikTok. It's modern. My car. I park my car and I plug it in because I'm a boss bitch. Get 30 miles because it's a hybrid <laughs> to you. Yeah, that's right. I modernized it. <laughs> I like that Trixie has just become an absolute wuss. <laughs> Get out of my dreams and into my car once it's done charging. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're going driving on the freeway for 30 miles till I have to plug in again. Being poor can be a drag. I'll never use a plastic bag. I'm Trixie. I'm Trixie. Like, Trixie, so you, you, you save the world, that sort of thing. Trixie, what happened to rock and roll Trixie? You're plugging in your car and using cloth bags? What the fuck? Stay modern. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep up, all right? We're not in the 80s anymore. It's 2010. <sighs> okay, so um, we're at Lisa's event. Me One of bro. the most soulless events we've ever been to. <laughs> I have to say, how does I agree with the, what comes up later, which is how does any of this have to do with um, pregnancy clothes? Like, I don't understand how all that works together. She's like maternity wear and moisturizer. Yeah. Well, you know, you I don't know, know why it even that, matters to me. Well, you know, you know, when you get pregnant, you also get like stretch marks. I know like a lot of my, my pregnant lady friends have had to like moisturize a lot, you know, with the stretching, et cetera. So I can see a link there. But it's this all, is like face products. Well, you know, since it's like moisturizer, this isn't like cocoa butter or whatever. What you want to do is you want to make sure that your baby comes out with great baby skin. So you moisturize from the outside in. OK, just put the mean, put the mean row on the on the stomach and let, let it just penetrate into the uterus. And then that way the womb gets moisturized. You know, I don't know how, how do I how have to explain it to you? Uh, PK. So PK she is bit. proud because after two years in the making, her skincare line is going live guys um so she gives us her her speech about that and she has branded everything she's taken she's gone to this spa in al barari <laughs> and she's put mina Ro decals over all of their decals so it says yes. mina Ro everywhere exactly and so people walk in they're arriving um the whole the whole gang is is showing up and so uh Talene is like um by the way Hey, let's go into a flashback for this event that you're doing. Have you thought about doing a little bit more of a fitness collaboration? Because like me and Raf, we always love fitness. Okay. Okay. How about this? We attach a parachute to everyone as they walk into the spa. Okay. How about that? You like that idea? <laughs> In my fitness business, I do a lot of work with women who are also postpartum, which is crazy because that means they've just had a baby and it's like a lot for them. It's a lot. So you know what I do? I say, put the baby down and throw a tire. That's it. It's huge business now. It's a multi-million dollar business. So then the ladies are arriving and Sarah's like, well, I come to the Heart and Soul Spa like almost every other week, sometimes twice a week. That's where I do my spiritual healing. And we get like a flashback to where a shaman dude be like, okay. all right, okay, come on, bring that good energy up through the stomach. And three, two, one, you're, you're totally healed. Everything that went wrong with you in your entire life, it's healed. Congratulations. She goes, but when I walked in, I could hardly recognize it because it's all branded for Mina Row now. Dun, dun, dun. Why is everyone shocked about this? It's an event. She's branding her event. Like, have they have never heard of a pop-up before? <laughs> Even if it is a pop-up for only six people? I do think it's weird that they're they're going so hard for Lisa on this. I think Lisa's just kind of pissed everybody off this year. <laughs> she's, she must have. And I think ultimately she's just not very fun. And I think people are sick of her shit. Commercials. Here comes one right now. So um, all the women are arriving and then um, Pam is there. That's Lisa's mother-in-law. And I just, for some reason, I just thought it was so funny. Like, <laughs> Chanel Ayan, Talene, Lisa, Brooks, Pam. Caroline Stanbury, and Pam. Pam. Who <laughs> literally looks like rich in leggings. <laughs> Pam did not know what she was doing. She was trying to do downward dog. and. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Pam comes in. So Lisa gives a speech like, guys, welcome to my skincare line. Now we're going to do yoga. <laughs> what? I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Didn't quite match, but that's fine. So, um, yeah, so they're doing yoga and Celine's like, guys, don't worry. I won't kill you guys. And she has like a stopwatch hanging around her, her or stop clock, or whatever you call it, like hanging around her neck. I'm like, what, I, what sort of yoga are you about to do? <laughs> That requires like this device, like this doing laps, etc. 
It's like, this is not going to be Guys, good. I know that we're just doing yoga right now, but I want you to imagine that your yoga instructor is the crocodile from Peter Pan. Okay, let's get going. Let's get going with this. So Brooks is like, I'm confused. What does yoga have to do with maternity wear? Why is heart and soul completely rebranded to look like Mita Rowe owns the building? I'm the one who owns a fucking spa. Leave it to Lisa Milan to do the most. I'm the spa owner. Me! <laughs> so they're doing yoga and everything. Ayan is bumbling and awkward and gangly. And, you know, she's like, the only exercise I do, honey, honestly, is my husband. Or if you drink a glass of wine, apparently it's like going to the gym for an hour. So I guess I'm going to the gym every day. I'm like, I don't think that a glass of wine is the same as going to the gym every day. I don't know who told I on that. Yeah, I've never heard that. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> I've never heard that one before. <laughs> so they do all they do yoga and kind of make fun of each other for all sucking at it. And then after, um, you know, it's time to start talking shit. So they go. Th- some of them split off to take massa- to get massages. So Stanbury and Talene go to get massages, and then Lisa and Sarah start gossiping. And so now they're talking about Maktoum. So Sarah's like, "Oh my God, he's good. I mean, it's hard for him to sleep at night, right? Because he was uh, he was almost kidnapped. Okay, this is." just fishy as hell to me and how is the storyline so little they're like oh remember that time octum almost got kidnapped <laughs> god that was fun pass a sushi roll yeah he's like you know he's like very afraid that he's gonna get kidnapped and he's like is anyone in the house he wakes up sometimes he'll be like sleeping and i'll be like barge in the room and be like oh my god are you kidnapped and then he'll be like oh my god am i about to be kidnapped i'm like i think you were almost kidnapped and then i'll be like okay good night and he has just so much trouble he has a really hard time falling asleep after that i don't know why so then uh, Lisa's like, yeah, I hope that doesn't affect him for the rest of his life. And she goes, oh, no, no. Listen, I take him to a lot of therapy and stuff with me and healing. I mean, right there, you know, where they're getting their facials right now. You know, we've had so much therapy. In there. I said, Maktoum, are you afraid of getting kidnapped? He said, yeah. And boom, we wa- we pulled the wax off. And, you know, little tiny back hairs came off. His trauma's gone. Yeah. His trauma's gone. No, but like, you know, I take him to therapy. So like, you know, he knows how to let it go. I mean, he's just scared because he found out that men were going to come into the house and like you know all that try to kidnap him and they already came to the house so like that he's it's just really nothing <laughs> like what I'm like what and lisa's what? like well she's lisa's like, like well, i guess i wish that he didn't have to hear about that i know but i'm very honest with him and listen i'm not telling him everything because you know i told him about the kidnapping which is terrifying but wait until he hears about something called due process have you ever heard of this it's ridiculous <laughs> it's absolutely a nightmarish idea <laughs> so lisa goes you know, but for me, I'm the opposite because, like, I try to protect my kids as much as I can because we don't want them to lose that innocence, you know? Just kind of, like, very politely saying, what the hell are you doing? You're exposing your kid to way too many details of this situation. And Lisa tells us, I know that, like, the way people parent is very different, and I personally would not have shared that much with my children, but maybe someone would look at me and think I'm being an overprotective mom who simply doesn't want her child traumatized the rest of their lives. So I don't know. I think I'd rather be overprotective than do damage control. I don't know. This whole story has bugged me all week. Just how Sarah's like, oh, my God, isn't it crazy? So we found out because we see a flashback of it now where she's like, isn't it crazy? So we found out that for six months, the maid was covering the camera. And then we found out she was drinking with men in the house with alcohol. And then she tried to kidnap my son. I'm like, wait a minute. Were your kid? Did you find the maid drinking in the house or something? And then you were afraid that you were gonna look like unreasonable for sending her to prison for that. So you added in kidnapping. I need more proof of this because it's already the workers' laws over there are already so scary that somebody can just be like, "Oh, and then I had her thrown in prison." I need to know what's happening. Like, is there any court trial for this? Is there any trial for this lady? Is there any proof Hmm. of any of this happening? Because frankly, I'm I'm worried for workers' rights. There, I said it. Okay, and I'm I don't want to call Sarah a liar, but so far she seemed full of shit, and I need some kind of proof. So in the other room, Brooks. Uh, is with Stanbury and Talene, and Stanbury's like, oh, are you just here to watch like my mother does as I go off to boarding school? And Brooks is like, yes, I mean, so you guys just leave, just don't worry, are you guys enjoying having a good time? Just enjoying which part? I'm lying down. So then um, they're like, it's the first time I've been able to lie down without Sergio coming in here and nagging me for a son. So yes, <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> Um, and so then Lisa, then in the other room, uh, Lisa's talking with Chanel and, um, and she's sort of 
you know, they're kind of like touching base after they're, they're fighting everything. And she's like, so have you been, you've been pulling away from me and getting closer to that one, Stanbury. She's like, yes, I have. And she goes, haven't you learned your lesson? Isn't she the reason why we're having these issues? Uh, no, you're having these issues because you betrayed uh, Sarah's trust and then Chanel betrayed your trust and then Caroline Stanbury betrayed Chanel's trust. Uh, you all started it. She's at the end of the trust chain. So I don't know. Look within is what yeah. I say. So Chanel's like, you know, look, I had lunch with her in Bali and it didn't feel real. But then they came back and she felt like her apology did feel more real. So She's fine with her now. Yeah. And Lisa's like, well, she should be sorry because we never fight. And that really took a toll on me. And she's like, well, you know, I have I still love you. But then um, she's telling us that she feels like Stanbury and Lisa are like the tigers on her dress, constantly fighting. And then she shakes her shoulders a little because she's got those huge tiger heads <laughs> on right. either shoulder. And she's just in the middle, you know, and she just wants to be friends with everybody. Right. So Lisa's like, I never want us to get back to that ever. Like, you know, I, you, you know, I know it hurts you a lot as much as it hurt me. And I don't want you to get too close to that bitch because I'm jealous. And they laugh and everything. Um, meanwhile, we see in the preview for next week, uh, Ion basically saying our friendship is over. So we know this is not going to last. Yeah, we've been waiting the whole season. And I guess they really did wait until the season finale to crash that relationship into the ground. Um, so then, um, Brooks, okay. So Brooks and Stanberry and Talene, uh, back to their room. So Brooks is like, Oh, been here before, been here. She goes, Oh, to this spa. I'm here all the time. I live here. She goes, Oh yeah. Well, I'm here every week downstairs. I, I do my healing here. So that's why I'm here. I'm here. I'm, yeah. I would appreciate it. If maybe you guys could come do your stuff in my, in my spa, but whatever. Yeah. I'm here for, I'm here for healing. Yeah. Do, does it work? So haven't you been to healing one time? I know exactly. <laughs> And she's like, you know, this is a lot because I would have given her my place for free. And, she goes, and Stanbury goes, but why aren't we at your spa? I don't know. Maybe she doesn't like toilets that are sunken into the ground. Well, she didn't ask you? No, she didn't ask me. Wow, you could have done this. You could have done this, Brooks. Just ask Roth. I said, Roth, couldn't Brooks have done this event? I'm sorry, couldn't Lisa have done this event at Brooks' spa? And Roth was like, totally. And I was like, thanks, Roth, for backing me up. <laughs> Roth was like, hold on, honey, I'm on the phone. I was like, that's Roth. He's very busy. I'll wait for an answer patiently, <laughs> unlike Marissa at the fucking Hillstone Kirby. <laughs> um, and Brooke's like, yeah, well, I was actually surprised. Like, why didn't she use Glass House? And everyone's like, yeah. So getting her worked out. Because at they first, are. Brooks is like, whatever, I have my own spa, whatever. And she's like, like, I do my healing. Well, why isn't this at your spa? How offensive. Hmm. I mean, she should be supporting your business just as much as you're supporting hers. And Brooks is like, yeah, yeah, I'm very supportive of everyone's business. And I love to see women thrive in business. So, yes, it is a little bit offensive to me now. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> So then she gets worked up. So now she's changed it. She goes, Lisa, what are you doing? You try to invite me to a spa and you're trying to act like you bought the spa. You don't own the spa, Lisa. I own the spa. So now you're a spa owner? Look, why else? I don't know that she's acting like she owns a spa in Al Barari, but okay. No, she's not. It's like a pop up. You're hilarious enough to just follow you down this path. Everybody's the same way. What she's saying makes no sense, but everybody's like, completely reasonable argument, bro. Yes. And we all know that if Lisa tried to do a pop up at the glass house, it would be a disaster. And I think Lisa was smart. She's like, I'm not going to mix my business with this drunkard. Just for you come TV. into my spa and you try to put your branding over my name. That's what trying it would be. to erase the woman owned business. <laughs> like you're never gonna win with Brooks. I mean, just look at Real House as a New Jersey and see what happens when someone just tries to put up a step and repeat at a charity function. Okay, it leads to chaos. It leads to the end of a show. So when it killed you to put eight in plastic surgery up here, baby. <laughs> Where was eight in plastic surgery at the at the Lisa Milan show. Where was that, <laughs> baby? <laughs> so, Brooke, uh, the producer's like, well, Brooks, do you really think like she's trying to make it look like she has a spa? She's like, 
She is. Why else would she decal the floor, decal the windows? If she's not trying to make it look like she owns the venue, a real friend wouldn't try to rain on another's friend parade. What is she? Barbara Streisand? She's not. Did I start a whole glass house maternity land? No, I didn't try to compete with her. I wouldn't do that. Also, because pregnant women shouldn't be wearing glass. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. So Brooke, I love Brooke saying, like, a real friend wouldn't try to ran another friend's parade as she's actively <laughs> a tropical storm over this spa. <laughs> like, over this event, she is flooding. Cars are hydroplaning through this yoga class and these massages. No, she's so not. delusional. She goes, I wouldn't put my friend who spent millions in building her business independently. You've not built this. Who are you kidding? That money came from what's his Zoltan, buns of the crack And you admitted it in the first episode. Yeah. She's like, eh, I wouldn't put her in a position where she felt uncomfortable. You're, you're, she's literally offering you a massage. <laughs> <laughs> How could she make me feel so uncomfortable and so unrelaxed? So Stan Grace, I would go and speak to her, maybe get into a fight, do it on camera. She said, yeah, agreed. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, so now Saba and dinner, Saba and Sarah go to dinner oh, together. Scene. Another hilarious scene. All these scenes are hilarious today. So Sarah walks in and she's like, well, she walks in and she's clearly very, very late. And Saba's like, oh, well, there you are. I was wondering where you are. It looks like you came from Mars. She's like, oh, sorry for being so late. She's like, well, it takes a long time to come down from Mars. <laughs> yeah, it is because you look sort of in, I'm trying to put forward the thesis that you look like you're from outer space because you're wearing a, a dress that looks like it's, it's, it's it's got to shine too. You don't, it's just okay. It's just sit down. I think I'm just gonna let it go. I get it, babe. We're aliens. You know, we're so much better than everyone else. We must be from a different planet, babe. But <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. Well, I'm surprised that you made it at all because you're so late. She goes, yeah. Well, I have kind of a phobia when someone says surprises. Like, babe, I'm this close. I swear to God to having a nervous breakdown. This close to it. <laughs> so please don't say surprise. Well, I'm this close to stabbing a kin with my chopstick. Do you understand? I'm about to write him a letter that says, From the desk of Summer Yusuf, I am professionally and personally parting ways with a keen for being a very handsome but awful person. And Sarah's like, well, if you're going to stab him with the chopstick, don't do it with a drink in your hand in one of my guest rooms. You're going to prison for a very long time. <laughs> so, I'll tell you that. Bib, you're going to jail is not worth it. Okay, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Are you in the mood to talk about... Sarah, are you in the mood to talk about something dramatic happening in your life? She's like, well, of course. I'm here on this table. At the cam we could set the cameras here. Of course I'm here. Listen, we've been arguing. And he's been putting in effort. And he's like saying, let's fix things. Let's fix things. I will care. Let's fix things. But to me, this is just an effort to move forward and to let, like, shut me up and move forward, but brush it under the rug. But there's no solution to the problem. I'm like, well, there is a solution. You could just dump him and leave him. He's not even in your country. You could just not accept his calls anymore. Oh, well, yeah. This relationship's fake. Sarah's so full of shit. I don't believe any of this. So she's like, me and Akeen, I mean, we're just arguing from Germany to Dubai. It's crazy. And Sarah's like, I'm not going to settle. <laughs> You're literally trying to marry an Instagram thought. <laughs> Who has yes. no money. You saw abs you're and you're now like trying to conscript him into service <laughs> in your household. Yeah. Uh, despite the fact that he's like a horrific person. She goes, I'm a single mom because I settled and I've been in abusive relationships because I've settled and I got my money taken away and stolen because I settled and I'm not settling anymore. So anyway, I was thinking and maybe I might marry this guy anyway, even though he told me to give up $5,000 because, you know, he has a nice smile. Not and Saba's like, you can't expand yourself until there's nothing left in your battery. It's like a battery in a vacuum, and you keep vacuuming and vacuuming, and before you know it, there's no more vacuum. And then there's dirt all over the floor, because there's no more battery in the vacuum. Do you understand me, my friend? All right, please calm down. I've never used a vacuum. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't understand these things. Is that, the, is that the loud stick that my maid used to push around the floor? 
So she goes, I, I need to Saba's be with somebody. Saba's so dramatic, it's cracking me up. She's I, like, please, please listen to me about this Instagram hookup, please. No, I need to be with somebody who's done the work and healed already. I don't need to heal someone that I'm with. And the napkin, the, the server just puts a napkin in her lap. She's like, I'm so sorry you have to be part of this conversation right now. I'm like, are you talking to the waiter or are you talking to us? <laughs> no kidding. We both need tips at this point. So she's like, oh, and then on top of Akeem having to go to the police every morning in court for the nanny, you know, doing everything for my son and my own. And then this nanny situation, you know, I do everything on my own, which is why I have to have multiple employees thrown in jail. <laughs> what are you talking about? So she's like, Saba, I'm tired. I've been so strong my whole life. I'm tired of wearing the superwoman fucking cloak. I'm tired. He doesn't help. This doesn't help. None of this helps. Me, Sarah, doing everything on my own. I mean, I've gone to a healing class in the Alberari. I've sold $10,000 tickets to scream into a pillow. What more can one woman do, Sarah? What you know, more? Sarah has always been an independent woman. All the Sarahs who are independent, wave your hands at me. <laughs> anyway, she has been independent financially from her parents at a very very young age, I learned that when I went to sleep in Yonsei in Dubai. Akeem doesn't have the success that Sarah has, so of course he will try to sit, control the situation because he needs to feel like a man. This is why I always tell Sarah, you have to be with someone on your level, Sarah, do it, be on a Martian level. I'm sorry, can I, uh, someone explain to me how Sarah's been independent from her parents since she was, come on with this. So, so it's like, please, he just needs to feel like a man. Don't let him deplete your battery, please, Sarah. You need to be someone on your level. Please be with someone on your level. And she's like, but listen, when I see, she goes, I, I don't know. I've just done everything on my own. She goes, Sarah, when I see you hurt, my heart hurts so much. What is it that you feel you need to accept this low level of behavior? Where is it that your value is lacking? Have you ever considered a bigger battery? Lithium, possibly. Please, Sarah. No, no. I feel, uh, I feel guilty. But of what? Of walking away from people. But why? Why do you feel guilty about walking away from shitty people? Because when you are healing, you notice everyone's wounds. And you notice who needs work. And you notice all of that. And I feel my job is I'm here on this world just to help. I faint in my chair. Yeah, I love you. I love that this, you pick those fixer uppers of physically perfect specimens every single time. You're just you're just this, a Florence night, real Florence fucking Nightingale over there. This self serving monologue of I just I'm so I just feel I just feel like I need to help. I see people who are damaged. I need to heal them. I this is just what I do. Once you're healed, you must heal. After she just said that she needs someone who is already healed and did the work, but she's doing this. This is like the equivalent of saying. So uh, tell me about yourself. What is your biggest flaw? Oh. It's just that I care too much. It's my biggest flaw. I just can't walk away from sick people. Did George Clooney walk away from people in the ER? He literally quit when his battery was low. He literally quit ER, Sarah. No. That's my point, babe. Do you understand? That's my point. My po Listen, I look at the king and I see a man. A man who needs healing. He needs a nurturing soul. He needs healing. Also pecs and, and you know, abs and like a beautiful ass and like a big dick. So like there's that too. But healing. It's about healing. It's about healing. <laughs> and so she, Sarah's like, oh my God, I'm going to cry. Oh no, please, please don't cry, Sarah. <laughs> so Sarah's like, yeah, I just... My end goal is it's marriage, but there are a lot of things missing. And if we don't fix these things, maybe there's no future because futures have fixed things in them. <laughs> you have a son. You're an excellent mother. Think about him. It's either we come up with a plan or I go to Germany and I deal with him. <laughs> but not before I get my little cubes of beef. Because she's like really interested. She says, you, you sabotage. Yeah, she's like, you sabotage her. And she goes, Saba, Saba the sabotager. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, you will meanwhile, be making t shirts for that, right? See everyone at BravoCon. We, we know that 
of this relationship goes to utter shit, right? So I hope we get to see that at the reunion. So now we go to a hotel with Talene and Roth, okay? And they're they're on a golf trip. And Talene's like, no one likes golf more than my husband except Sergio, Chris, and Rich. So we thought, what better way to host a golf trip at Jabal Ali? It's a place where people golf, and you have to really love golf. And guess who loves golf? <laughs> there he is. His name is Roth. Roth, do you love golf? Tell him how much you love I golf. I love golf. I love I'm golf. On the phone, golf. Babe. I love golf. I'm on the golf. phone right now. He'll tell you later. He's very busy. By the way, what a funny sentence. No one loves golf more than my husband, except maybe every other male on this show. <laughs> Wait, you really <laughs> narrowed it down. So, um,. <laughs> So now, uh, hi, ladies, I'm going to leave you. This is Tal, okay? Raf and I want to invite you all to a little golf trip overnight stay at the Jabal Ali Lakeview Hotel, and we're all going to pretend like we know what we're doing, okay? Raf, anything you want to add, Raf? Raf has nothing to add. Well, let me tell you, audience, staycations, they're this thing in Dubai because we have the most beautiful hotels in the world, and there's never a single soul in them except for you. (laughs) So, you know, a staycation in Dubai is where you, like, get on a – you don't have to get on a plane, but you get a break, and you're in, like, a seven-star hotel. Like, I'm not even kidding you. There are so many stars. It's, like, between six stars and eight stars stars there isn't even an eight star it's the top seven star hotels you know that staycations are like a thing literally everywhere right yeah and i've never heard of a seven star hotel is that even true is that a they, thing no they yeah they do exist it's true they exist when do they true. start adding stars to hotels there's a whole here's the thing there's a whole class of hotels in this world that are so luxurious and so fancy that like normal people don't have access to them like they're they not listed on travel websites you have to like know about them i know this because one time mm. i found a, an old job i found a binder of like luxury destinations it was like when i was working at like a studio lot and it was like these hotels and these retreats that are just they don't it's like a it was like a secret binder it was like oh places that are like ten thousand dollars a night you know and like you've, you've just never seen anything like these these things and um huh yeah it's a whole new it's a whole other world <laughs> it's wild yeah well, well, rich go. people rich people have they just have access to accommodations that we don't have hmm yeah i wonder who built those so they cut to everyone arriving and um brooks is late of course and so then she finally comes and she's like the queen has arrived the queen has arrived tyler roth are gonna be pissed that i'm late but i had to work on my salon that i actually own it wasn't the pretending <laughs> uh so it's like yes yeah, step your money up lisa millar um, so they are all now it's time to all go golfing. So they all go golfing. And then um, Chanel, th- which means that we get a time, a uh, time honored classic trope, which is Real Housewives on golf carts. being like, We are women. We don't know how to drive golf carts. Uh, in this case, actually, Ion really doesn't know because she doesn't even have a driver's license. She's like, I cannot t- I cannot drive a car because my, my brain only works for three seconds. I cannot I cannot pay attention longer than that. So. Yeah, I. Uh, this is too much, guys. You need to talk to each other, housewives producers. I know that you're all different production companies, etc. But having two how the only two housewives on at the same time, both having golf outings within two weeks of each other, and both doing the wacky golf cart thing, and both doing the wacky swinging thing. You guys need to kind of coordinate because, come on. Yeah, so like, well, let's all go get our vaginas frozen next. Right. Too much. So we get a lot of the usual stuff, you know, trying to hit golf balls, missing. Chanel actually winds up being the one who hits the ball the best, which is pretty funny, et cetera. And I thought the funny part of this was Saba going, I grew up playing a lot of golf, and I feel like the men are so threatened by me on the golf course. Sergio won't even make eye contact with me. They're all terrified as Saba, the Saba Chua golfer extraordinaire. And then we find out that Saba has texted everyone on the group chat being like, watch out. Hide your husbands because the most amazing golfer is coming to the course. And then she can't hit the ball to <laughs> save her life. 
From the desk of Slabba Yusuf, I have decided to personally and professionally part ways with the sport of golf. I had many fond memories as a child, but I'm realizing in adulthood I need to have more fruitful pursuits. For any questions, please see the number below. Thank you so much. <laughs> So uh, now they're all talking after golf and they're talking about Lisa and Tolene are talking and Lisa's like, did you enjoy the event? My mother-in-law did. And she's like, I did. It was a good event. She goes, well, I heard that Brooks was like complaining about something. Mm -hmm. And Tolene's like, well, you know, I think that you should talk to Brooks about it. But you know that she also has a salon and a spa, right? So I feel like maybe it would have been a good idea to speak to her about either using her facility or something like it might be something along those lines. I mean, I certainly didn't tell her that she should be furious with you because she also has a spa and you're kind of manipulating her out of even being an owner and making the entire city think that she doesn't even own a spa. <laughs> I didn't do anything like that. Maybe you guys should talk. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, again, I just, I think you should talk to her because I don't want to misquote. So Lisa's like, I mean, at the end of the event, like while clearing the bill, she basically says that like she noticed that Caroline Brooks refused all the services like massage and whatever else that was being offered uh, because she said that she uh, didn't want to she felt uncomfortable or whatever so telling us just i know she was kind of put off by a few things so just go talk with her she's like no i will go talk to her so um now the women and the men um split ways because the men are going to keep playing golf and the women are going to go um uh like gather and yeah the women gather in like a big drinks. empty space where there are no customers <laughs> yes again. and so they they're kind of joking around but then saba is like so lisa how was the rest of the spa launch what happened after you just used so much of your battery was it completely depleted by the end of your spa event poor lisa please use less battery <laughs> And uh, she's like, well, it was amazing. First of all, thank you, ladies, for coming and supporting me. It meant so much to me. It really did. Brooks, you had an issue with the fact that, you know, what was it? I don't even know what the issue was. You got free massage and you were like, no. And Brooks like, well, obviously I'm a spa owner. So you hosted your event at Heart and Soul. And, you know, it's just a weird location to have our friends do the services that I provide in my salon. Is there, are the toilets basically holes in the ground at this point yes but do we offer massages also yes so when i saw the location and the massage i was just like i'm not gonna take part because that's like conflict of interest in my business because that's what Tallinn <laughs> told me i should say interest. What is that? No. It doesn't even make any sense. It's a conflict of interest to my business. And then it was like, Brandon, <laughs> like, you owe the spa. And that's, I mean, that's what it looked like. She was, well, first of all, you were never in my thoughts when I was planning this. So it wasn't to hurt you. And I'm sorry if I did hurt you. But when you do an event, you brand the event. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> And Talene's like, yeah, it was the branding, though. Like, one, like not once did I see heart and soul anywhere. Not once. I didn't even see Aiden plastic surgery. So it was just like a lot. Yeah. Um, and I guess heart and soul was the uh, charity the, that she was she was supposedly doing. No, heart and right. soul. I think heart and soul was the name of the spa. And so they're like, wow, oh. you eliminated all of their branding. And Lisa's like, well, that's how it should be. Mina Rose paying to be in heart and soul. And um, Lisa basically is like, last year they came from my business. They came, they made up lies, yada, yada, yada. So I'm like, I'm doing this event. I'm doing a clean, like, buy the books event as the way I should. And they're still coming for me. So these girls are just jealous of me. Yeah. Um, so then Chanel's like, she has a right to throw a party wherever she wants. Why are you coming for her? And she's like, I'm not coming for anybody. Like, don't even talk to me like that. I'm not coming for anybody. And Chanel's like, we are women. We support each other. She's like, I told her to speak to Brooke. So then Jolene tells us, like, the only reason I'm saying anything is because after the heart and soul of Van, I got a call from Brooke's freaking out. Like, she went haywire. She was so upset. I had to say something. Brooks is always going haywire and so upset. She's like, oh my god, 
I was walking home and there was a line of ants on the sidewalk. And I was like, what, you think you just because you can walk in a line means I can't walk in a line? It was just like so disrespectful and a total conflict of interest for me. Yeah. Um, so then Lisa's like, okay, well, to be honest, you don't have a business to lean. Okay. So uh, when you do throw a line and a launch of your own, so she's getting upset with to lean, but it's really Brooks. Like Brooks, I feel like always gets away with everything because no one really wants to go for Brooks because they're afraid of her. <laughs> There was like, I you know what? Talene's in the way. I'm going to get mad at Talene instead. I don't think I don't think they're afraid of Brooks. I think that Brooks is just annoying to fight with because she's just like drunk and she's just like. <laughs> well, yeah, they don't want to fight with her. Is what I mean. I you don't know? mean like they're cowering in terror. I just mean they don't want the they're, they don't want to get into a fight with Brooks. She's she's a, she's hard to fight with. Um, I have a business of my own. Thank you very much. Okay. It's called attaching parachutes on women and watch them run alongside the highway. She goes, okay, well, you will not host a whatever your business is called event and not plaster your logo everywhere. You can't plaster logos on the beach sand. I'll tell you that. I've tried it. I've tried it. So Stanbury goes to the bar and orders champagne, and she goes, nothing I say will be the right thing on either side. So I'm mute, and I'm happily mute. Huh. Looks like boarding school worked after all. Finally <laughs> took a life lesson from it, how to be mute. So Lisa's like, well, if you're going to come to a Mina Row event, you're going to see Mina Row everywhere. And Talene's like, you want to lower your voice with me? And Lisa's like, no, because you're getting on my nerves. She's like, well, you don't have to talk to me like that. Don't patronize me. Do not patronize oh, me right well, now. Well, don't fucking Do point at me, Talene. Me. Don't point at oh, me, Talene. you can point at me. Don't you point at me, Talene. Me, though. You can point at me. Talene. <laughs> so Talene's like, though. you put yourself on this high horse, which is not even a yoga pose, I'd like to point out. She's like, well, you cannot go to a Mina Row event and not expect to see fucking Mina Row everywhere, which is like a very true point. So they're fighting with each other, and it's like not even their fight, which is weird. <laughs> so Sarah's like, I believe people that can't control themselves try to control the environment. And when the environment is out of control, they get angry and aggressive. And that's what's happening with Lisa. And uh, Brooks is like, um, we've now expressed our feelings. I told you how I feel. You told me how you feel. Uh, let's just drop it. <laughs> it's like they're fighting because of you. Yeah. Like this, and it's also the stupidest fight. Like, I can't believe you put so much branding up. <laughs> so yes. now we're in the hotel rooms because everyone's going to change before dinner and everyone's sort of chatting. And um, uh, Lisa's talking about how she's basically telling Rich about what happened at lunch. And, you know, Rich is, and just, Rich is just so uninterested. No. I mean, Rich is so out of this marriage. I can't even believe these. I looked to see, to see if they divorced yet. And they're still they're still married. But he's like, so how, did you have fun, darling? She's like, no, you won't believe the fight with these ladies. And he's just like, oh, yeah, God. So they're basically just all venting to their husbands and stuff. And um, Stanbury is telling Sergio, uh, you know, I'm not interested in getting in between the Clash of the Titans, but it was brilliant. It was the first time I've not been involved, and I really enjoyed it. Sergio, why don't you pr try to be not involved between me and my uterus? You'll, you'll really enjoy it. I mean, baby, 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 I can't. Baby, I can't. Please, please, baby, please. Don't make me die with no one having my last name. Please, <laughs> baby. So, um, now, uh, I just... They're all getting ready. So now we go to dinner time. They show up at this empty restaurant, a very nice looking but empty restaurant. And uh, they're all sitting down and everything. And the chef comes out and gives them a little speech about what the meal is. And then Sarah says the dreaded words we hear on Bravo. Guys, I was thinking, let's play a game. Okay. Uh, here dun, it is. Dun, dun. Here it is. Find a really hot guy on Instagram and then try to make him your husband. And then be upset when you find out that he's actually kind of a dick. Okay, go. <laughs> Yeah. So Sava and Sara are going to run the, the husband game, right? So the first question is, so what was your wife's nickname growing up? And Sergio's like, oh my God, I wasn't alive. How should I know? <laughs> Which was pretty good. And they all start cracking up. And, you know, they just have these silly, it's like a silly, typical you yeah, know, like game. How long should sex last? Da, 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 da. And they're all laughing. It's... It's actually more endearing than I was expecting and uh, gracefully short, too. Yes. Okay. So let's, I'm going to fast forward through here. Okay. So then um, 
Sergio's like, uh, okay, so then Chanel's at, talking to Brooks, and she goes, what was that about today? You know, I was confused. And Brooks is like, it's about the fact that I don't support other spas, because you know what? That's my business, and that's my niche, and she knows that. And what part of that don't you understand? Would you get a massage from a place? Would you, If you had a hamburger place, would you ever eat a hamburger from someplace that didn't massage you at that place that you got a massage for your hamburger? I wouldn't. I'll tell you that. And Chanel's basically like, well, honestly, it kind of felt like jealous. You no, know, no, there was no jealousy whatsoever. She goes, no, it was jealous. Oh my gosh. She goes, no, I have, listen, I have a very successful business. They say in Dubai, if you can get two people into your business, that's basically a blockbuster day. I mean, look around, right? <laughs> There's no one in the city. And um, she, you know, we know that Bro uh, Chanel is just doing Lisa's dirty work because that's what Lisa said. She's like, these ladies are just all jealous of me. That's the only answer, which is, such the middle school answer, right? They're mean to you because they're jealous, honey. So that's like her thing. So Chanel's just going and repeating that. And she's like, well, I didn't like that. And Brooks goes, well, I needed, I did exactly what I need to do. And Lisa, me and you have already spoken. I've already told you about massaging hamburgers, right? <laughs> and I, listen, I don't have jealousy. I supported you from your fashion show to the whatever you do about things that you do. You, when you have dog clothes, you serve, you put dog clothes on dogs. I support it. I support women, unless they're hamburger making women, which I do not support. And uh, Lisa basically, because Chanel said, well, I'm saying that's my opinion. So Lisa tells Chanel, you know, it was a lot. Your feeling is accurate. You're acting like you don't, you know, you don't use outside services. You don't even have your own hair done at your salon. Black people come into your salon to do your hair. And Brooke's like, oh, what? what? What are you talking about? And it's like the African people come to your salon, do your hair, and don't pretend you don't go into outside services because it's becoming ridiculous. So she's basically saying like, uh, don't act like you're like it's a conflict of interest to use people outside of the world to the glass house. Right. She's like, you don't even you don't even use your own services. So Brooks is telling Talene now, wait a minute, how many times has an African ever come to my salon to do Ayad's wig, my wig, anybody's wig? And Talene goes, um, I'm gonna go ahead and stay out of the salon. So all of my services are done in my salon. Okay, I have the same glam squad I've been using since Adam was four. Okay, so I would never just dump them off because I've been I've opened up a multi million dollar business. I'm gonna say it again five more times. Are you mad? Because you don't have a fucking salon, bitch. You have to wash your hair and your sink at home. I'm like, I guarantee no one is jealous of Brooks because she has her own salon. <laughs> like, that's, I just don't think that's someone, something people care about owning. It's just Brooks has started up this whole argument that makes no sense in the first place. And everybody's falling for it. And it's just becoming complete nonsense. It's hilarious. And then Brooks is like, hey, wait a minute. Haven't you ever been to my salon where you walk into the salon, you see all my wigs are wig heads? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, so it's like, what kind of salon is this? It's just like you go to the salon and just to see all of Brooks's wigs. <laughs> You know Wild what? Up. I got in trouble for opening my mouth. And, you know, you weren't roasted. I was on your behalf. And I was called a bitch too many times. One too many times, Raph. Okay? And Lisa goes, well, you were acting like one, Talene. And you were acting like one. And you had your hand. And, like, you were getting loud. So that's what happened. Where I think everybody can agree here, Lisa was the one getting loud, right? And she is again. She's like pissed. So Celine's like, Well, you know, I love how you forget when you're the one who's loud. She goes, Yeah, because I was just matching your energy. She goes, No. And she's like, Yes. And you were speaking on a situation you're not qualified to speak on, and you had the audacity. And Celine goes, Oh, so now we're going for qualifications. And whose finger is in whose face now? Because it looks like your finger is in my face. And Lisa's like, Mine now. She's like, Well, you called me a bitch. Yeah, and I would call you bitch again if you keep acting like it you are so trash and she goes well you're a ghetto and the fact that you had the audacity to even address me in my business and then meanwhile the guys are like <laughs> women am i right raf is like god take a look at these these ladies ladies arguing <laughs> Yeah, Rich is like, it's done, darling, drop it. So then Chanel's like, you know, Talene can be a bitch, but Lisa's taking it too far right now. She's like, our husbands are here. We can't do this. <gasps> God, don't, don't, don't. God forbid. And she's like, you know, I don't want to tell my friend to calm down because I don't want to embarrass her in front of everybody, but damn. So then dessert comes and Talene's like, I lost my appetite. <sighs> dun, dun, dun. Tiki, tiki. So the dinner is ruined. <laughs> Dinner is ruined, and next week is the season finale where we're going to see what happens with Lisa and Ion that causes their relationship to be severed forever. 
So uh, stay tuned for that. And people watch the show. Tell your friends. Get into it. Catch up. It's good times. But we're done with this episode right now. And we'll be back on Friday with um, Orange County. We also have part two of Chimp Crazy. That recap is coming up tomorrow. So that's a big show on Max that everyone's talking about. And we just have lots of other shows all the time. We did a bonus this week, which is talking about remodeling and oven choices. We really did go online shopping for ovens. (laughs) So join us. then it turns into an introspective (laughs) moment about um, taking on people's input. So it's really, it's, it's a journey. Yeah, guys, come come for a spiritual oven journey. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for being here, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurth. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish. It's Jen Plish. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo. Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. Ring that bell for Rachel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking violet couture. We love you guys.